Naruto made his way through the village towards Shikamaru's house with a skip in his step. Today was the first exam of the Chunin exam and he was ready for it. Ino had told him a few days ago she was going to participate so to be ready. Ino and he decided to meet at Shikamaru's because the Nara was going to be the hardest to get moving. Their assumption was correct for when Naruto got the Nara compound he could hear Shikamaru's mother yelling at him to get moving. Naruto noticed a figure lying on the porch and moved closer to see Shikamaru's father, Shikaku, laid out and looking at a book. The man was exactly what Naruto figured an older Shikamaru would look like but with two scars on his face, one above and below his right eye and a goatee. Morning Shikaku-san. Naruto said as he walked up to the older man. Morning Naruto. The man yawned out. Ready for the exam. Of course. Naruto said with a smirk. Why are you outside sir? My troublesome wife is on the war path getting my troublesome son ready for the exam. Shikaku said as he turned a page on the book. Naruto noticed it was an issue of Ika Ika. A smart shinobi knows when to fight and when to retreat. Naruto chuckled at the advice and sat down next to the clan leader, pulling out a scroll to do some last-minute reading. After a few minutes of listening to Shikamaru's mother berate him Ino came up the path. Morning Shikaku-san, Naruto. Both men gave a small wave to Ino as she walked up to them. I guess Shikamaru isn't ready yet. She huffed as she walked into the house, Naruto chuckled knowing Shikamaru was going to be in trouble now. Sure enough one minute later Ino burst out the door dragging Shikamaru by his shirt. Naruto let's go I don't want to be late. The blonde genin immediately jumped up and followed his teammates, he may be stronger than Ino but no reason to direct her anger at him. Not long after they left Shikamaru's did the boy get on his own feet so they team wouldn't look weak to visiting teens. The first exam was being held in the academy much to Naruto's displeasure. He thought he was right of the building, and they were to go to room 301. The noticed a group of people walking into the building and quickly blended in so not to draw suspicion after climbing the stairs Naruto noticed everyone going into a hallway. Ino and Shikamaru started to but stopped when Naruto did. What's up Naruto? Ino asked as Naruto looked behind him then forward and then back again. He scratched his head and turned to his teammates, waving them to come closer. Is it just me or did we only walk up one flight not two? Ino and Shikamaru both thought for a minute before Shikamaru closed his eyes and seemed to be focusing. Kai, he said before opening his eyes and looking back at the sign. I see, it's a genjutsu. Shikamaru said before turning back to his team. A genjutsu is placed on us sometime after we enter so we see the second floor as the third. Naruto and Ino nodded before the team moved up the stairs quickly, hoping no one would notice them. Arriving on the third floor they were greeted by the sight of multiple teams resting against the walls outside the room. Naruto noticed the trio from the sand village was against the far wall and shot a smirk to Konkuro, who narrowed his eyes at the blonde. Turning back Naruto saw Shikamaru giving him a questioning look but just sighed and walked over to the wall, sitting down. Ino was using a window to check her appearance so Naruto began looking around for their classmates but didn't see anyone, though there were a couple leaf headbands. That's a lot of people. Ino said as she looked around the hall. Don't focus on that Ino. Shikamaru said as he moved to the wall and sat down. A lot of villages just send teams hoping to look impressive, quantity over quality. Plus I bet I could kick half these guys' asses. Naruto said with a cocky smirk. He said it loud enough that some of the closer groups heard him. Shikamaru let out a groan and Ino giggled at the statement. Naruto plopped down next to Shikamaru and pulled the scroll he was reading out earlier to finish looking over it. Ino began pacing the floor in front of them. She was not the most patient of people and didn't like the fact they had to wait for the exam, even though she made them come early. Hey guys. The trio all looked up and saw Choji, Hinata and Shino all walking towards them, Choji waving quickly. Well it looks like all the genin teams will be at the exam. Naruto said as he stood up. Sasuke-kun is coming. Ino said as she snapped her head towards Naruto. Yeah, didn't I mention that? Naruto said casually before turning to the three newcomers. So how have you guys been? Any interesting missions? Not really, we mostly focused on getting the damn cat. 
Naruto chuckled at how evil Choji said cat but knew what he meant. Everyone eventually did the catch Tora mission and none made it out unscratched. It sucks being a tracking team sometimes. At least you don't have a team of troublesome blondes. Shikamaru said, of course he stopped and looked at his teammates as he heard the cracking of knuckles. What was that? Ino said with a fire in her eyes that promised pain. See what I mean? Shikamaru said before being knocked to the ground by Ino. Anyway. Naruto said as Ino started stomping on his other teammate. You guys ready for the exam? Shino nodded while Choji looked pumped up. Hinata however looked down and began poking her fingers together nervously. Naruto sighed as he saw that Hinata had not gotten over her low self-esteem issue but if she was here then there was little he could do about it. What about you guys anything exciting happen on your missions? Choji asked as Ino finished giving Shikamaru a beating. Not really. Naruto said with a shrug as Ino looked at him confused. What about kicking that guy's ass? She said, making the others look at him confused as well. Oh yay, forgot about that. Naruto said as he put his hand on Yukiko gentle. Well about the fight but not you. Still creepy when you talk to it. Ino said as she watched Naruto. You're just jealous she's prettier than you. Naruto said before sticking his tongue out at Ino. The blonde girl growled and started to crack her knuckles as she moved towards Naruto. Hey everyone's here. The group stopped and turned to see Sakura, Kiba and Sasuke walking towards them. Sasuke-kun. Ino called out, completely forgetting about Naruto, before running towards the Uchiha. Naruto watched with a small smile as Sasuke was unable to dodge but noticed the boy had a sour look ad looked like he had been in a fight. Get of him Ino pig. Sakura yelled as she grabbed Ino and pulled her off Sasuke. The two quickly got into a yelling match, Naruto walked past them and helped Sasuke up. What happened to you? Naruto asked his friend as he stood. Nothing. Sasuke replied with a cold tone. Naruto however gave him a quick hit in the chest and when Sasuke looked up at him to see his blue eyes staring him down. After a few seconds Sasuke let out a sigh. Got challenged by a guy and thought I could take him. He was just as fast as me and the Sharingan helped but he was too strong for me, probably even you. Well damn, now I want to fight him. Naruto said, causing Sasuke to chuckle. After I get my rematch. Naruto grinned and gave his friend a nod. Hey you guys need to quiet down. The group all turned to see a boy older than them walking towards them. He had white hair pulled back into a ponytail, glasses and wore a dark purple shirt with a high collar, a white undershirt, dark purple fingerless gloves with armored plates on the back of the hand, a white cloth waistband worn at an angle, dark purple pants, blue sandals, and a shuriken holster on his right leg. You're just out of the academy right? Geez. Who are you? Sasuke asked as he stepped towards the boy. Kabuto. He said as he pushed his glasses up on his face. But instead of that look behind you. The group looked back to see almost everyone staring at them. Everyone is nervous about the exam, quiet down before you cause a scene. The group looked guilty as they closed their mouths but Sakura spoke up. Kabuto-san is this your second time taking the exam? She asked, Kabuto shook his head and chuckled. Actually it's my seventh. This caused everyone to look surprised. Wow, so you know a lot about this exam? Sakura asked hopefully. That's right, Kabuto said as he pulled out a deck of cards. In fact I'll share some information with you guys, these are my nin info cards. They're basically cards with information burned on them with chakra. They hold four years of research on them. The group had gathered around Kabuto and looked at the cards impressed. Show me information on Rock Lee of Konoha and Gara of the Desert from Sunagakar. Sasuke said gaining everyone's attention. Naruto wondered who Rock Lee was and assumed it was the guy he fought with. You know their names already so this should be easy. Kabuto said as he quickly pulled two cards and feed Chakra into them. Just show me. Sasuke said annoyed. Rock Lee is a year older than you guys, completed 20D rank and 12C rank. Kabuto laid the card down so they could see. His sensei is Guy and he's a taijutsu specialist. Teammates are Neji Hayuga and Tenten. Naruto noticed Hinata flinch at the Hayuga's name and wondered why she did. Gara is the same age as you guys, mission history is 8C rank and 1B rank. 
I don't have much more information on him because he's from another village but I know he has never been injured on a mission. Seriously. Naruto said, shocked that a genin could do a B-rank mission unharmed. Of course he thought the mission might be like his ad was just a favor for a high up person. Quite. Kabuto said as he put his cards up again. Many other outstanding genin are here from villages, well the hidden sound is new so there isn't much talent there. So everyone here are basically. Sakura said looking nervously around the hall. Yep, they're the elite of their villages. Kabuto said with a grin. This won't be easy. Alright if you get a rematch with Caterpillar Brows then I call dibs on Sand Boy. Naruto said to Sasuke, everyone turned to them with a confused look. HN. Sasuke said. Where did you meet that guy? Ino asked the duo as Sakura nodded along. In the background the others all looked on with interest. Naruto was about to explain when he saw movement coming towards them. Sasuke was the first to move, pushing Kabuto out of the way he blocked two kunai thrown by a spiky-haired genin. As he did another genin, with his face covered in bandages, ran towards Sasuke with his fist draw back, Naruto noticed a gauntlet on the genin's arm. Wasting no time Naruto moved to intercept the man, drawing his katana and swinging it towards him. The genin saw Naruto just in time to jump back and stand next to his teammate. Who the hell are you? Naruto asked as the two boys were joined by a female, all wearing headbands with a musical note on it. We're from the sound village and we heard what you said about us not being much talent and we're going to prove you wrong. The one with the bandaged face said. Before Naruto could say anything smoke filled the far end of the room causing everyone to stop and look towards it. Quiet down you worthless brats. A powerful voice called out, as the smoke cleared everyone saw a large group of leaf shinobi. I am Ibiki, the examiner for the first section of the Chunin exam. The man was large with scars all across his face, he wore a black bandana on his head and a black trench coat. You five, cut it out before I decide to expel you. He said as he pointed at Naruto, Sasuke and the three sound genin. The trio starred at them a bit more before turning and moving into the crowd. There will be no fighting without permission, even with permission there is no killing. Ibiki scanned the room and noticed some people looked upset. We will now start the exam. Ibiki reached into a bag and pulled out a tile with a number on it. You all will pick a number and the go sit in that seat, after you are all seated we will pass out an exam. Everyone slowly walked up and received a tile before moving to their seats, the leaf shinobi waited for everyone to sit before placing and test face down in front of each person. You ready Hanada? Naruto asked as he looked over at the girl, she nodded nervously before looking down at the test. Naruto gave her a small smile before focusing on his test again. Do not turn your test over until I say to. There are many rules to follow so I'm going to write them on the board. Ibiki turned and started writing on the blackboard. You start the test with 10 points, there are 10 questions and for every question you get wrong you lose a point. Rule 2 is this is a team test, whether you pass or fail depends of the combined score of your team. Naruto heard others complain but Ibiki just shot the room a dark look and they shut up, except one. Wait a second. Sakura yelled out. I don't understand the subtraction part either but why is this a team test? Almost everyone saw her glaring at Kiba as she said it. Shut up, you have no right to ask me questions. Everything has its reasons. Sakura blushed from embarrassment and quickly sat down. The third rule is that anyone caught cheating will have two points reduced. Everyone gasped at this and Ibiki smiled as he turned. So there will be some who lose all their points and are asked to leave. A couple of the leaf shinobi proctors chuckled. Realize that the pathetic ones who get caught will be destroying themselves. As shinobi trying to become chunin be proud ninjas. The final rule is that those who lose all of their initial points or don't answer any questions correctly will be failed along with their two teammates. A tense silence filled the room causing Ibiki to grin. The exam will last one hour, begin. Naruto found the rules to be odd but flipped his test over. He was smart enough and so were his teammates so he wasn't worried. At least not until he actually looked over the questions and found them to be on another level, he could only answer one of them because it was on Fuenjutsu but Naruto noticed it was a very advanced question. 
he found it really odd to ask such difficult questions, Asuma never went over any of the stuff they were asking. Plus the tenth question wasn't even printed, he had to wait for the proctor to give it to them. Shikamaru let out a sigh as he looked over the test, he knew some of the answers but not enough to pass. He also found it odd that the tenth question wasn't written, he didn't like this test. Shikamaru thought for a second and looked back up at the rules, thinking about how they were worded he realized this wasn't a test of knowledge but of cheating. That meant he needed to cheat and not get caught, so therefore someone in the room had to have the answers. Shikamaru decided they would have put fake Genonai with the real answers but he didn't know how to find one. Turning slightly he saw that Ino was looking at her paper with a frustrated stare, he slowly put his hands under his desk and went through some had seals. Kajmane no Jutsu, Shikamaru's shadow extended and weaved through the chairs before grabbing onto Ino's. The blonde girl looked surprised when she suddenly couldn't move but then her right had begun to write at the bottom of the paper. This test is about cheating not actually knowing. They probably have people set up with the answers so look for older Genin, possible someone you might have seen around the village. After you get the answers jump to me and Naruto to write them on our tests, Shikamaru. After the sentence was written Ino felt her hand go lax and she gained control again. She read the words and nodded to herself before looking carefully around the room, she didn't recognize anyone but decided to just aim for older leaf Genin. Laying her head down Ino placed her hands in a triangle forward. Shintenshin no Jutsu, launching out her spirit Ino flew unnoticed by everyone and straight into the body of a genin. The mind was easy for her to overpower and she looked down only to see a blank test, cursing to herself she released the Jutsu and flew back to her own body. After she got back Ino realized she had a better target, readjusting she once again preformed the Jutsu but aimed for Sakura instead. She flew into her friend, enemy and actually had a small struggle before taking over her mind. Smirking Ino, Sakura looked down at the test and started to memorize the answers. Making it back to her body Ino quickly jotted down all of the answers before following her pattern and aiming at Shikamaru, the Nara was expecting the sudden intrusion and allowed Ino to take his body over. Ino quickly wrote down the answers before releasing and getting ready to take over Naruto. Naruto felt something enter his mind and try to take over his body but as soon as it came it vanished. What was that? Naruto thought. Kyubi. When he didn't get an answer Naruto wondered what it could have been. Looking around the room carefully he noticed that Ino was laying down on her desk. Why is she sleeping? Wait. Suddenly Naruto realized what had happened and fear took him over. No. Naruto placed his pencil down and tried to calm himself while going into a meditative state. Ino looked around extremely confused, she knew she hit Naruto but why was she now in a field? She snapped her fingers when she remembered her father telling her some people could create mindscapes, like he could, but she didn't remember how to get past them. Normally she would just leave but she noticed the mountain in the background and wasn't the gossip queen of Konoha for nothing. She started heading that way when Naruto appeared in front of her. Ino what are you doing? He asked I a panic. Shikamaru figured out you have to cheat to pass the test so I took over forehead and got the answers. Then I took over Shikamaru to fill in his test before coming to do the same for you. Ino said then narrowed her eyes. What I want to know is what's up with all this. She spun around with her arms wide. I'll explain later. Naruto said as he glanced over his shoulder. Just give me the answers and go. Ino didn't like how Naruto was trying to get rid of her and looked over at the mountain. What's over there Naruto? Naruto looked back and Ino noticed he looked afraid. What are you hiding? Ino. Naruto said calmly. I will explain later but not now. Ino noticed he was getting very defensive, something the calm carefree Naruto never did. Fine. She said carefully though with a bit of annoyance, before giving the boy the answers. She let the jutsu go after that and Naruto let out a long sigh. Seems you won't be keeping me a secret much longer. Naruto turned and found himself right in front of the mountain. What the? He said confused, the QB laughed. I could have easily brought the girl closer and shown myself. It said as it looked down at him. But the fear you feel of having to explain it is much sweeter. Naruto glared at the beast before disappearing out of his mind as it laughed. 
Opening his eyes Naruto looked back towards Ino, who was glaring at him. Letting out a sigh he quickly filled out his test and tried not to think about his future discussion. Okay, now we begin the tenth question but first I want to go over the added rules. Naruto heard gasps around the room as Ibiki spoke. Nice timing. Naruto and others turned to see Konkuro walking in the room guided by a proctor. Was your doll playing beneficial? Naruto saw Konkuro flinch but he turned back to Ibiki. Just sit down. I'll explain now the rules of desperation. Naruto heard Hinata Ip and looked to see her shaking slightly. First you must choose if you're going to take the tenth question or not. Choose. Naruto looked to the voice and saw it was the blonde girl from the sand village. What happens if we choose not to take it? If you choose not to then your points will be reduced to zero and you fail along with your teammates. Ibiki said with a smirk. What? Someone screamed. Well of course we'll take it. Another yelled. And now the other rule. Ibiki said calmly, not bothered by their screams. If you choose to take it and fail you lose the right to take the Chunin exam again. What kind of rule is that? There are guys here who have taken the test before. Kiba yelled as he stood from his seat. Ibiki however started to laugh. You guys were unlucky this year it's my rules. Silence filled the room as Kiba sat back down. But I'm giving you a way out. Those of you who don't want to take the question can take the exam next time. He looked around the room before speaking. Now let's begin the tenth question. Those that wish not to take it raise your hand at once your umbers confirmed leave. At first no one moved but soon people started to slowly raise their hands. Naruto looked to his teammates, both sat calmly waiting for the question to begin. He then looked at Sasuke, who looked annoyed, and then Hinata who still seemed stressed out. He could see she was close to raising her hand and was having an inner debate to let her or stop her. Just let the weakling try, if she fails then that's that. Naruto heard in his herd. Shut up you stupid fox. Hinata-chan is not weak. Naruto thought back at the fox. Whatever. The QB said before focusing oh what was happening in the room. Pay attention boy. Naruto turned to see that Ibiki had started talking again. Backquote good, now then everyone that remains. Ibiki said as he grinned. Has passed. Everyone, Naruto included, looked at the scared shinobi in shock. To the 78 here I congratulate you on passing. Wait what do you mean we pass? What about the 10th question? Sakura asked after registering what Ibiki said. There was never a 10th question. Ibiki said with a smile. Or rather you could say those two choices were the 10th question. Well then what the hell was the point of the first nine questions? Naruto looked to see it was the blonde-haired Suna girl again. Naruto mental made a note that she was easily angered like Ino and Sakura. Those questions were there to test you information gathering skills. We even included some Chunin who knew all the answers. Ibiki pointed to some men at desks. So you could get them from them. The rules were made so you would think the pressure was on you individually not as a team. Ibiki started to untie his bandana. But to those who cheated poorly you fail. Removing the bandana revealed Ibiki's bald head but it was covered in scars, burns and a few holes. Even Naruto couldn't help but flinch at the sight. Because at times information is more important than life and on missions in the battlefield people risk their lives for it. A tough man to hold that many scars. Naruto heard the QB say and smirked. That almost sounded like approval. Naruto thought, the QB let out a small growl but didn't reply. Naruto however agreed with the beast and he wondered what the guy was capable of. If the enemy or a third party notice you there's no way to know if the information is accurate. I want you to remember this, important information in your hands can be a powerful tool for your village. So we had you try and gather information to weed out those who were incapable. I still don't understand the final question. The blonde Suna girl said again. Question 10 is the true test. Everyone gave Ibiki a confused look. The 10th question was a take it or leave it question. You either fail and get another chance or take the risk of never trying again, a true leap of faith. Ibiki stopped and thought for a minute before smiling. Say you guys all become Chunin, you get a mission to steal a secret document. The amount of enemies and their abilities is unknown and of course there would be traps set up. Now you don't want to die or lose your comrades so can you avoid these dangerous missions. 
Looking around Ibiki made sure he had everyone's attention. The answer is no. No matter what the danger there are missions you can't avoid. The ability to be courageous and survive any hardship those are the abilities needed to become a chunin. Now I wish you guys all luck. Ibiki's eyes shifted to the windows right before they exploded inwards, making everyone jump back. A black blur rolled in through the window, the corners became taut as they stuck into the ceiling and ground thanks to attached kanai. I am the examiner for the second exam, Enko Mitarashi. The woman standing before them, she had purple hair done up in a short spiky ponytail and wore a tan overcoat with a purple inseam and a fitted mesh body suit that stretches from her neck down to her thighs, which were covered by a dark orange mini skirt. Damn. Naruto thought as a blush came up on his face. You're early. Ibiki said as he stepped around the tarp. Enko looked around the room before turning on Ibiki. 78 people, that's 26 teams Ibiki. What the hell? Your test was too easy. She said rounding on him. Maybe there are a lot of outstanding ones. Ibiki said with a grin. Bah, whatever. Enko said waving him off. I'll cut them in half in the next exam. She then turned to the room. All right Gakis follow me to our next location. Everyone rose from their seats and gathered into their teams as they began to follow the woman. Well Naruto. Ino asked in a loud whisper, causing Shikamaru to give them odd looks. Later Ino. Naruto stressed out between his teeth. Ino huffed and crossed her arms. Soon the group was walking towards the edge of the village that Naruto recognized as near the forest of death, an area Yugao and Hayate said to avoid. Of course that was exactly where they ended up. Welcome to the second testing ground practice area 44, also known as the forest of death. Enko said with an evil grin as she pulled out a large stack of paper. You will sign one of these forms, there will be death in this examine ad if you don't it will be all my fault. Everyone gave he a blank stare as she smiled big at them. Now you will sign one of these then send a team representative to that booth. She pointed towards booths set up near the fence surrounding the forest. You will each receive a scroll with either the heaven or earth seal on it. Your goal is to reach the tower in the middle of the forest within 100 ad 20 hours, that's exactly 5 days. With 26 teams there will be 13 heaven and 13 earth, you need both to pass this exam. Enko pulled out two scrolls to show them. Once this exam starts it's anything goes until you reach the tower, the only rule is that you cannot open the scrolls before you get to the tower. Naruto go get the scroll, make sure to seal it into your scroll right away. Shikamaru said. Naruto nodded and made his way towards the booth. Shikamaru turned to Ino. What's up with you and Naruto? When I went into his mind he had a mindscape and he was hiding something. Ino said as she watched her teammate leave. Ino now is not the time to worry about something like that. Shikamaru said with a sigh. You heard the instructor, we could die in there. So worry about petty things like secrets later. Ino was surprised at Shikamaru's sudden seriousness but nodded along. The two then looked over the form before signing it as Naruto showed back up. Got it and they assigned us a gate to enter from, come on. The trio moved around the fence until they came to their assigned gate. Alright Naruto what scroll do we need? Shikamaru asked. Heaven, I got ours sealed in my arm. Naruto said as he tapped his arm. What's our plan? I say we start to head towards the tower, you send out clones to set up traps at barriers. Hopefully they will find a scroll for us but we can engage anyone we come across. Shikamaru said quietly to make sure he wasn't heard. I can do that, I'll also have a few henge into you guys and look like we're the team. Naruto said getting a nod from his teammates. Alright everyone, the second part of the exam begins in 3, 2, 1, go. Enko's voice said over a loudspeaker, on the word go the gates all sprang open and the Chunin hopefuls ran into the forest. Naruto looked through the trees as he stood on a massive tree trunk above his team's camp. It had been two days since the second task had begun and they had yet to see any other teams. His clones had laid multiple traps and seals all around the area to alert him if anyone was caught. Letting out a sigh Naruto flipped of the tree trunk and landed in front of the tent they had set up, moving over to the fire he stirred it with a stick. Morning. Ino said through a yawn as she came out of the tent. Stretching she looked around the area before focusing on Naruto. Any problems? Nope. 
been quiet so far. Naruto said as he looked up from the fire. Which makes me feel uneasy. Why? Ino asked as she sat down and pulled out a storage scroll. Isn't that a good thing? Naruto let out a sigh as Ino unsealed her cosmetics and other beauty products. Ino makes sure not to use anything with a scent. Ino looked at him with an annoyed look but nodded. And it isn't bad but we do have to find another scroll. So what should we do? Ino asked as she began to brush her hair. I'll wake up Shikamaru and the three of us can figure it out. Naruto said as he walked over to the tent and moved the flap. He was surprised to see Shikamaru awake and laying on his back looking up at the tent ceiling. Hey. Naruto said casually. Feel like joining us. Sure. Shikamaru said with a shrug and crawled out of the tent, joining Ino at the fire. Any movement last night? Nothing to report sir. Naruto said as he gave a mock salute, Shikamaru rolled his eyes in response. So Shiki what's the plan? Ino asked as she began putting up her things. Why do I have to have the plan? Shikamaru asked in an annoyed voice. Because anything we come up with will just be changed by you. Ino said casually. So let's just skip that part and go straight to you telling us what the plan should be. Naruto chuckled as Shikamaru muttered out a troublesome. Naruto, send out some clones and have them head towards the tower. Shikamaru said turning to the blonde male. Once they get a good distance and have them create as many traps as possible. We will patrol outside that area and force teams towards it. Naruto nodded and quickly made five clones to run ahead of them. What if they get destroyed? Ino asked. Then we know where possible targets are. Naruto said as he started to stand, creating two more clones as he did. I'll pick up camp you two get something to eat. Ino and Shikamaru nodded before starting their meals while Naruto and his clones packed up and sealed all of their sleeping gear. Finishing up Naruto walked over to his teammates and the trio began the trek deeper into the forest. For three hours they moved at a sedated pace, not wanting to catch up to the shadow clones that Naruto had sent ahead of them. Naruto was also constantly making more clones to move around them and keep an eye on them in case of an ambush. What will we do if we run into our friends? Ino asked, breaking the silence surrounding them. Naruto and Shikamaru both stopped and shared. We take their scroll if they have one but don't hurt them enough that they can't defend themselves. Naruto said with authority. Maybe we should check if they have a heaven scroll before we waste time and energy on them. Shikamaru suggested to them. How will we know if they aren't lying? Ino said, putting her own thoughts in. We show them our scroll while they show us theirs. Shikamaru said as he turned to Naruto. No one but you would have the equipment to create a fake scroll. True. Naruto said as he turned to head in the tower's direction but suddenly stopped and put his hand up. He closed his eyes and let the memories flow through his mind before opening them and turning to his left. Team coming in, coincidentally it is a Konoha team but I don't recognize them. There were more Konoha teams than others so it makes sense. Shikamaru said as he looked around. Twin shadow. Naruto and Ino nodded. Ino jumped and ran up a tree behind them while Naruto created two shadow clones. Shikamaru followed after Ino and the two took cover in the tree while the clones used a henge and took the teammate's shape. The three Naruto's then stood like they were discussing something and waited for their targets. Five minutes passed before two figures dropped down across from the Naruto's. Well looks like a rookie team. Said the taller of the two, a boy wearing a long sleeve black shirt, blue shorts and a headband, bandana style, on his head. What scroll do you need? Naruto asked as he stepped forward. Seemed pretty cocky their kid. The female of the group said. Naruto noticed she wore the same outfit as the boy but a skirt instead of shorts. However she stopped when she noticed who was on the team, while older than them she recognized them. Be careful, black haired boy is Kenzo's cousin and from the main Nara branch. The girl whispered to her friend. Damn. The boy said as he took in the team's members. That's also the Uzumaki kid and I think the girls from the Yakima clan. He knew about all of their targets, each were from the main branch of their families and he knew a lot of people referred to the Uzumaki kid as a demon, he didn't know why but it couldn't be good for them. I've got this, the girl said as she held up her hands. Listen we're all from Konoha, we need an earth scroll. If you don't just show us yours and we'll leave. 
She then narrowed her eyes. But if not then how about you hand over yours? We don't want to hurt you but we will pass this task. She finished speaking and placed her hands behind her head, secretly signaling her hidden teammate. Why don't you show us your scroll first? The Eno disguised clone said as she put her hands on her hips. Don't test us girly. The male said as he took a step towards them, his right hand dropping to his kanai holster. Naruto went to step forward and draw his sword but found he was stuck. The hell. Naruto said as he tried to move. Seems Kenzo finished. The girl said with a smile as she walked to Naruto. The blonde was trying to figure out what was going on when it suddenly hit him. You have a Nara on your team. The two Konoha Genin grinned as they approached the team. Sure do. The girl replied. Now let's find that scroll. She then began to pat Naruto down as her teammate checked the Shikamaru clone. A clever plot. Even though we knew you were missing a teammate we had no idea what to expect. The Shikamaru clone said as it was searched with its eyes for the hidden Nara. They have a good amount of chakra to reach around behind and hold all three of us. That he does. The boy replied as he moved to the Eno clone. I guess our Nara was just smarter. The two Konoha Genin began to chuckle as the girl finished patting down Eno, her face full of confusion. She then stood and rounded on Naruto. Where's the scroll? Naruto grinned at her. I couldn't find it. He chuckled as the girl growled at him. She stopped and pulled out a kanai as she walked to Eno. Listen up boys I'm only going to say this once. She walked around Eno and held the weapon to Eno's face. Now I'm not going to kill a fellow shinobi but if you don't tell me where the scroll is I'm going to give your friend a nice souvenir. You realize we can't turn our heads and thus have no idea what you're threatening to do. The Shikamaru clone said, getting a chuckle from Naruto and the male genin. Shut up Taiki. The girl growled at her teammate. I'm going to cut her face all right. Ooh, yay that threat makes sense now. Naruto said, trying to get a rise out of the girl. Fuck you. The girl said through gritted teeth. Now I'll give you to the count of THR. She didn't get to finish because Taiki suddenly punched her in the face. Naruto felt his body become free and quickly leapt away from the area, turning as he did and spotting the shadow heading back to its source. Flying swallow, pumping wind chakra into his sword Naruto drew it and sent a blade of wind into the trees, cutting branches. Ah. Naruto heard a voice scream as branches and leaves fell to the ground. What the hell Taiki? The girl screamed as she gained her footing and fell into a defensive stance. Taiki isn't her right now. Taiki said in a sing-song voice. Would you like to leave a message? The female genin looked confused and failed to notice the two shadow clones move to her back. Ino kicked out her knee as Shikamaru grabbed her left arm and pulled it behind her. Tie her up then the guy. Naruto said as he walked towards the fallen branches, being watchful for moving shadows. What the hell is going on? The girl asked as she was being tied with ninja wire. The clones said nothing as they finished and moved to tie up the male, confusing his teammate as he offered no resistance. Naruto made it to the trees and moved the leaves with his foot until he found the body he was looking for. Giving him a few kicks and only getting groans Naruto sheathed his blade and pulled the boy out, throwing him over his shoulder and walking back to his friends. Come on down guys. Naruto called out to his teammates. The female nin's eyes went wide as Ino and Shikamaru landed next to their counterparts. What happened? Taiki asked as he gained control of his body again. Turns out our Nara is smarter. Ino said as she stuck out her tongue. But we searched them, how could we touch the clones? The girl said confused. Secret. Naruto said, getting only confused looks he shrugged. I don't need to give away my secrets, now let's find that scroll. Team 10 began searching each of the genin and Shikamaru found the heaven scroll on his cousin. Got it. Shikamaru said as he flipped the scroll to Naruto. Let's get going then. Naruto said, getting nods from his team. I'll leave clones to untie you three after we put some distance between us. Naruto told the tied up team as he and the others began heading into the forest, laughing at the annoyed yells of their victims. You should have killed them. Naruto let out a sigh as he heard the voice in his head, he had hoped the Kyubi wouldn't bother him during this task. There was no need to, plus they're from Konoha. Naruto casually thought. Exactly. The fox said. You think they're just going to forget the humiliation you put them through. 
more than likely they will pay you back in full. It let out a low chuckle as it finished and Naruto tried to not believe what the fox was saying but unfortunately the beast was right. He knew he needed to watch out for them for a while after the exam was over just in case. They traveled another two hours towards the area his clones had set up when all three of them stopped. A large sense of fear came over them, making all three jump back to back and draw their weapons. For a minute none of them spoke before Ino finally asked what they were all thinking. WW what was that? Her voice was shaky and full of fear, never had they sensed killing intent of that level. I don't know but it came from over there. Naruto said as he pointed his sword in the direction he was facing. Let's get out of here then. Shikamaru said as he turned to leave. I think I should go check it out. Naruto said, not turning away from the trees. Shikamaru almost fell from being caught off guard by the statement. Are you insane? Ino asked as she looked at her teammate with panic in her eyes. No genin could have produced that powerful killing intent. Naruto said as he sheathed his blade. I want to find out who did it and why they are here. Troublesome sword swinging ramen eating bastard. Shikamaru said in a heated whisper before letting out a log sigh and turning and walking towards the source of their fear. Let's go then. Wait a minute. Naruto said as he grabbed Shikamaru. You guys go on to the area my clones created, I'll go check it out and meet you there. No, we're a team and if you're going we're all going. Shikamaru said as he turned to face Naruto. The two boys stared each other down as Ino fidgeted off to the side. She agreed with both of them, while she didn't want to go and see what it was that created that powerful fear she also knew she couldn't get over the guilt of Naruto going alone. The three stood in silence for minutes before Naruto finally let out a sigh and broke contact. Of all the times for you to grow a pair. Naruto muttered as he moved past the Nara. Shikamaru smirked and turned to follow Naruto as Ino shook her head at their antics, she took a deep breath before following after them. The trio were soon jumping through the trees again, Naruto created more clones to travel with them to have more eyes at the ready. The group searched for hours before finally coming across an area that held massive damage to it. Whoa. Ino said as she looked around at all the burned trees. I would have to say this is where the killing intent probably came from. Shikamaru said as he too looked at the area. Sasuke. Naruto said quietly to himself but was overheard by Ino. What about Sasuke-kun? The blonde girl asked quickly. There's a good chance this was all his doing. Naruto said as he motioned for his clones to search the area. You sure Naruto? Shikamaru asked as he once again looked around. I mean you would need some high level jutsu to do this much damage. When Sasuke first got his Sharingan he copied a bunch of high level jutsu from his house and has been training with them for years. Naruto said with a shrug. He can't do a lot at one time but two or three is possible without him getting chakra exhaustion. I knew Sasuke-kun was great. Ino said with a dreamy voice as her eyes gained a faraway look. Boss. One of the clones said as he landed next to Naruto. Definitely Sasuke. He used that technique. The clone and Naruto both shivered as it finished talking. What technique? Shikamaru asked as he cocked his eyebrow. Don't worry about it. Naruto said to him before looking at his clone. Any idea where they went? Found a trail. Only one set of footprints and they're deep. I think Sakura is carrying both Kiba and Sasuke for some reason. The clone reported. Probably chakra exhaustion. Shikamaru said, throwing in his own analysis. Well it's getting dark, we could attempt to track them now or I send clones while we rest. Naruto said, snapping Ino from her daydream. I vote we rest. The girl said, I don't have the stamina you two have and won't be very useful if we do find them. Like she's useful when fully rested. The QB said, Naruto coughed to hold down a laugh. He didn't fully agree with the demon but it wasn't totally wrong. Alright, let's follow the trail until nightfall then make camp. Naruto said before giving his clones a nod. I will use clones to keep watch and will move out at sunrise to find Team 7. Ino and Shikamaru nodded and the three quickly followed the trail left by Sakura. Naruto wasn't sure if he should be happy or disappointed that Sakura left such an obvious trail. He just shrugged it off at her obvious distress for having to care for both her teammates. 
he did admit she was making excellent time for a girl who didn't show much interest in physical conditioning and made a note to somehow use this as a way to get Ino to improve her own training. Finally after three hours the sun was beginning to fall below the tree line and the team decided to set up camp for the night. Do you think Sasuke-kun is okay Naruto? Ino asked after they had settled down and began eating. I don't know Ino. Naruto said as he looked up from his food. I'm very worried that in all that carnage not a single body was found. Ino gasped as the reality hit her. But no one could have survived Sasuke-kun's attacks right. Maybe they got burnt up. Ino said hopefully. Maybe Ino. Naruto said as he looked back at his food. All we can do is hope they're all okay and find them tomorrow. Ino gave a small smile and went back to her food. What will we do if they have an earth scroll? Shikamaru asked after a moment of silence. Take it. Naruto said without missing a beat. Ino however looked startled by his answer. Just like that. But they're our friends. Naruto let out a sigh and shook his head. And I would feel sorry but this is a tough world we live in Ino. Naruto said as he put his food down and looked her right in the eyes. If we want to pass and become Chunin we need to think like the shinobi we are and use every advantage we get. I know it just feels wrong. Ino said with a defeated tone. No one ever said the life we chose would be easy Ino. Shikamaru said as he rose up and walked over to the tent. I'm going to bed. The two blondes nodded as they watched Shikamaru head into the tent. I'm going to bed as well. Naruto said as he got up. Make sure to put out the fire when you're done. Yeah. Ino said as she watched Naruto leave. She let out a sigh and watched the fire start to die down. Please be okay forehead. Ino watched the fire a few minutes before putting out the fire and heading to bed. Boss wake up. Naruto opened his eyes and groaned. Rising he saw the dim light of sunrise peeking in the tent. Anything to report? Naruto asked as he stood and began stretching. Nope. The clone said before popping away. Naruto waited a moment as the others slowly began dispersing as well. After sorting all of the memories he moved over to Shikamaru and Ino to wake them. Let's go guys. Both his teammates groaned as they awoke. Come on I want to find the others A. S. A. P. After a quick breakfast Team 10 was up and moving at full speed to find their friends. Naruto sent clones out and had them use chakra to get ahead so they could prepare for anything. After a few minutes of travel he had the group stop as a clone's memories came to him. What's up Naruto? Shikamaru asked as he looked around them. A clone ran into Neji Hayuga. Naruto informed them as he opened his eyes. He wasn't interested in our scroll but also hasn't seen Team 7 so let's keep moving. Nodding the trio quickly began following the trail again, this time on the lookout for Neji and his team. Naruto wasn't convinced the boy would leave them alone and was going to be prepared. After another few minutes of running the genin heard voices and Naruto signaled to be quiet and move slowly. Coming up behind a bushes Team 10 peeked over them to see both familiar and unfamiliar faces. Sakura stood behind a boy with a full body green spandex suit and orange leg warmers with a Konoha headband tied around his waist. Naruto recognized him from Sasuke asking Kabuto about him, Rock Lee. Lying on the ground next to her were Kiba and Sasuke, both looked somewhat pale and Naruto could see cuts and bruises on them. Across from them where the sound genin Naruto had meet at the beginning of the first task. Why is the busy eyebrow guy helping forehead? Ino asked in a whisper. Wait and we'll find out. Naruto said as Lee began talking to the bandaged genin. Suddenly the sound genin ran and jumped towards Lee, his gauntlet arm pulled back. The trio suddenly went wide-eyed as Lee reached into the ground and pulled out a large tree root to block the attack. As the sound shinobi leapt back Lee started to unravel the bandages around his arms and with an impressive show of speed appeared in front of his opponent in a crouch. He's faster the Sasuke. Naruto thought as he watched Lee kick the rival genin up into the air and leap after him, appearing behind him. Lee wrapped the boy in his bandages and then his arms before spinning them both so their heads faced the ground. Primary Lotus, Naruto watched as the two teens spun at an incredible rate right into the ground, causing a large dust cloud to kick up. As it settled they saw Lee kneeling in front of Sakura again, he was breathing heavy and looked tired. Naruto turned and was amazed the sound genin get up seemingly unharmed, 
he then spotted the mound of dirt where the genin landed and followed the trail back to the other sound nin. It seemed the spike-haired one-hearted jutsu that softened the ground so his teammate wasn't hurt. This looks bad. Ino whispered, Naruto nodded and decided if the sound doesn't want to fight one-on-one -on -one then neither should the leaf. You two protect Team 7. Naruto said and before whither of his teammates could say anything he leapt towards the fight. Flying Swallow, Naruto drew Yukiko from her sheath and aimed the attack at the bandaged genin attempting to attack Lee. Everyone's head snapped to Naruto as he made his presence known and the sound genin jumped back to his team just in time to avoid Naruto's surprise attack. What the hell? The spiky-haired genin yelled. Where do you fuckers keep coming from? Well you are in our village. Naruto said as he stood in front of Lee. How are you feeling? The blonde looked slightly over his shoulder at the teen. The lotus took a lot out of me but I should be fine in one second my youthful friend. Lee said before giving Naruto a thumbs up. I can hold them off until then. Naruto said as he put his attention back to the sound team. You think you can stop us? The spiky haired boy said as he stepped forward. Eat this shithead. Decapitating airwaves, Naruto watched as the boy held his palms up and noticed there was a hole in each. Air suddenly shot out of the hands in the shape of blades aimed at Naruto and Lee. Naruto smirked before raising Yukiko over his head. Grand flying swallow, Naruto swung his blade down and enjoyed the looks on the sound genin's faces as his attack ripped through the others and straight towards them. Naruto lost his smirk as the sound nin evaded his attack. The fuck was that? The girl said as she looked at Naruto wide-eyed. Yosh that was a very youthful attack my friend. Naruto looked over at Lee, who was grinning like a madman. Thanks Lee. Naruto turned back to the enemy genin, they were getting into a triangle formation with the black-haired boy in the front. Normally Naruto would create clones but he hadn't had a decent workout in a while so he charged straight at them. Get him Zaku. The girl said as she hit her black-haired teammate in the shoulder. Got it. Zaku replied through gritted teeth. Decapitating airwaves. Naruto watched the attack come at him again but instead of cutting through it he moved and avoided the wind blades, never breaking his forward momentum. Shit. Zaku said, slightly amazed a genin could avoid his attack. I got him. The bandaged genin said as he pulled back the sleeve covering his gauntlet and ran to intercept Naruto. The blonde Konoha nin wasn't sure what the weapon could do but decided to avoid it. As the sound genin swung down to hit Naruto the swordsman moved to his left and prepared to swing his blade when his body gave way and he dropped to his knees and his ears felt like exploding. Erg. Naruto screamed as he grabbed his ears. He looked up and noticed his vision was blurry and he could make out the sound genin in front of him. Naruto. Sakura and Ino both cried out as they saw him drop. There's a little trick to this. The sound genin said as he rubbed his gauntlet with his other arm. This beauty creates sound that will pop your eardrums and inner membranes, making you lose your balance. He laughed as he finished and started to slowly walk towards Naruto, raising his arm again. Crap, this is bad. Naruto thought as he began trying to move his body, he found that it was possible but not enough to fight and any clones he made would be in the same condition. If I heal your ears you will make that puny human pay. The QB growled into Naruto's mind. What? Naruto thought back, confused as to why he would help. You forget I hear everything you do. The QB responded. That annoying pitch woke me from a pleasant dream and I want him to pay. Naruto thought for a second before responding. How much? Naruto responded, hoping the QB wouldn't go to extreme. That weapon is annoying and it's attached to his arm so I don't think he deserves one anymore. The beast replied with a chuckle, Naruto looked through his blurry eyes at the genin before nodding. The change was almost instant as he felt chakra flood his head, seconds later he could see and hear fine. Time to finish this, the genin said as he brought down his fist straight at Naruto's head. To the sound nin's surprise however Naruto rolled forward, grabbing his sword in the process, and stood up behind the bandaged genin. Shadow Stitch, faster than any of the genin present could see Naruto went from facing away from his opponent to facing his back with Yukiko raised above his head. Imperial Wrath, the sound genin turned and raised his gauntlet to block Naruto's attack but was shocked when the blade's path suddenly changed. Ah, 
Everyone stood shocked as the sound Jenin's arm fell to the ground and he crumpled to his knees, holding the spot where his arm used to be. Naruto kicked the arm towards his friends and then walked behind his fallen opponent, bringing his sword to the boy's throat. Give me your scroll or I will kill him. Naruto said in a calm but commanding tone. The two remaining enemies stood shocked at what to do, while the leaf genin were shocked at what Naruto had done. The sound duo shared a look before the girl nodded and pointed to her fallen teammate. You think we care about him or the scroll? Naruto and the other leaf genin all looked shocked by the sudden declaration. But he's your teammate. Sakura yelled at them. If he was stupid enough to get beaten then that's his problem. Zaku said as he straightened up and aimed his palms at Naruto. Decapitating airwaves, Naruto grabbed hold of his bleeding opponent and preformed a kawarimi, replacing them both with tree branches. Ino, Sakura see if you can stop the bleeding. Naruto said as he moved over to his friends and laid the bleeding genin down. Be careful, he could still attack. The two girls looked nervous but Ino nodded to him so he turned back. Why don't you care if your teammate dies? Naruto said as he looked across the field at the remaining sound genin. We don't care about this exam, the scrolls or even each other. The girl said as she pulled out throwing needles. We have a mission to complete, even at the cost of our lives. And what is that? Shikamaru said as he stepped up to Naruto's side, he felt bad for not helping before and was going to make this an even fight. Kill Sasuke Uchiha. Zaku said as he raised his arms to fight. Bah, I can't take any more of this. Everyone's eyes snapped upwards to two figures standing in a tree. The speaker was Neji Hayuga. He had long black hair, a khaki shirt, under which he wore a dull blue shirt, dark brown shorts, blue shinobi sandals. He also had bandages wrapped around his right arm, chest, and right leg. Some minor sound bullies trying to pick on second-rate ninja. Lee what the hell are you doing we've been waiting for you. The girl screamed down at her teammate. She had brown hair in a Chinese-style buns on either side of her head with short fringe bangs falling over her forehead protector which she wears in the traditional manner. She wore a pink sleeveless kipau-style blouse with red sleeve trimmings and yellow fastening buttons as well as dark green pants and standard blue ninja sandals. I am sorry for my unyouthful tardiness Tenten Chan. Lee called out to her. For punishment I will do 300 laps around the village when we get back. Enough Lee. Neji said as he focused on the sound genin. You made the mistake of attacking my teammate and for that. Suddenly veins appeared around Neji's eyes, making almost everyone flinch except Naruto. He had seen Hinata use her family dojutsu keke Genke, the Byakugan, so it didn't surprise him. You're going to pay. Neji started to shift into his fighting stance when suddenly he stopped and stood straight. It seems that won't be necessary. Sasuke-kun. Naruto and the others all turned when they heard Sakura but flinched as Sasuke rose up from the ground. Naruto stood confused at the strange black flame-like markings that now covered his friend's arms, legs and the sides of his face. What the hell? Naruto almost whispered out as he felt the strong chakra coming from his friend.